Lesson 5.2, Properties of Rational Exponents and Radicals. Alright, properties of rational exponents, these should look familiar from the preparing lesson. Alright, if we multiply with the same base, we add the exponent. Notice the bases stay the same, just the exponent changes. Here, we're multiplying with the bases, we can distribute the exponent. Notice the exponent stays the same. Here we have exponent, parenthesis exponent, so we end up multiplying the exponents. And the same is true for division. If we divide with the same base, the base stays the same when we subtract the exponents. Here we can distribute when we divide. Notice the exponents stay the same. And lastly, a negative exponent means reciprocal. Something that'll help is if you remember, you can change either the base or the exponent, but not both. Here the bases stay the same, there and here the bases stay the same. Here the exponents stay the same, here the exponents stay the same. We only changed one thing, not both. Here the base has stayed the same. Here the base stays the same. Let's do some examples. Let's simplify these. All right, we're multiplying and the bases are the same, so that means we should add the exponents. Of course, to add fractions, we need a common denominator. In this case, that would be 6. I'm going to multiply to get common denominator. So it would be 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which gives us 5 over 6. Let's try this one. Here, the bases are different but we're multiplying so we could distribute the exponent. So it'd be 27 to the 2 thirds, it's exponent, parenthesis, exponent, we'll multiply, times 6 to the 2 fourths. All right, remember the Denominator of the exponent is the index, so it would be the cube root of 27 squared. Oh, hey, 2 fourths is the same as 1 half, so it would be the same as the square root of 6 to the first. Cube root of 27 is 3. If it's a square root, we usually don't write the index. 3 squared is 9, so it's 9 square root of 6. Or, since the problem initially had exponents, we'd write it as 9 times 6 to the 1 half to match the way the problem was written originally. Let's try another. Well, there's a couple ways we could do this one. Uh, the way most students want to do it is we're multiplying so we can distribute the exponent. And we'd end up um, multiplying the exponents because it's exponent, parenthesis, exponent. So this would be 3 times negative 1 third. W is 3 times a negative 1 third. And then the um, here, how about this? The exponents are the same, so we could write it like that. Usually we go the other way, but this is the same as um, x to the m, y to the n, uh, m, 
equals x, y to the m. And our properties, it was the other way around where he distributed, but it goes both directions. All right, the negative exponents means we reciprocal, so it's 1 over 4w. Let's try another one. All right, we're dividing. It means we subtract our exponents. But what are the exponents? The top one is t to the first. So when you divide, we subtract the exponents. So a 1 is 3, sorry, is 4 fourths. Need a common denominator. 4 fourths minus 3 fourths is 1 fourth. But what if the problems are written as radicals instead of exponents? The same properties apply. When you multiply, you can distribute the radical. And when you divide, you can distribute the radical. So for here, we have the same index. And I can't do the cube root of 25, and I can't do the cube root of 5, because neither of them are perfect cubes. But what if, since they're multiplying, what if I multiply those together? You get the cube root of 125. Well, the cube root of 125 is 5. Well, let's try this one. The indexes are the same again, so I can rewrite it as one division. And then we can simplify. 32 divided by 4 is 8. And x divided by x is 1. They cancel out. And the cube root of 8 is 2. All right, dividing. This is more interesting. To divide with radicals, we need to multiply by the conjugate, just like we did with square uh, the i's. So the conjugate of square root of 7 minus 2 would be square root of 7 plus 2. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by that. So on the top, it's just 1 times that. On the bottom, I have square root of 7 times square root of 7. 2 times the square root of 7. Negative 2 times the square root of 7. And negative 4. Notice those cancel out. And on the bottom, we have 3. There we go. We've divided. I know it still has square roots, but hey, we simplified it. Simplified means no square roots on the denominator. No square roots, no radicals in the denominator. So how do we add and subtract radicals? So we've done multiplying and dividing, now adding and subtracting. Well, you simplify them first, and then you combine like terms. Let's do a really easy one. Notice that and that are exactly the same. So I have five of them. I subtract three of them. Five minus three would be two of them. All right, cube roots, subtracting. Hmm, those don't look the same. They're not the same. They're not like terms. You can't subtract the th 81 and the 3 because they're inside the cube roots. So we need to simplify first. So cube root of 81, how do we simplify these by hand? Well, one way is you can put it in prime factorization. 3 times 9, uh, sorry, 9 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I look at the prime factorization, and 
and it's a cube root, so I'm going to put it in a group of three. That group is coming out of my radical, and whatever is not in a group stays. So I have three cube roots of three, and I'm subtracting one cube root of three. Three minus one is two cube roots of three. Let's try another one. Time it's fourth roots. Uh, six is just two times three. That's not four of anything. But x to the fifth is five x's. Notice four of those make a group. So I can bring that group out of the radical and everything else stays. So the six is still there and this other x is still there. And again, I can't do the four through to six and it's just a single x. But notice I have two of these and I'm adding another one of those which makes three of those. So how do we write radicals in simplest form? Well, we have to make sure we've removed all the perfect roots. So that'll be uh, factoring it, the prime factorization. And we have to rationalize all the denominators. So the fourth root is 64. What is that? Well, we can rewrite 64. Let's factor it. 64 is 8 times 8. 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So this is the same thing as, looks like there are 6 twos. I want a group of 4, same as my index, here's a group of 4. It comes out of the radical everything else stays in the radical. So that's 2 times 2, or 2 squared. This is a special one because often that's it. We just say it's a 4 through to 4. We could write it like that, 4 through to 4. But this one's special. If we rewrite it as an exponent, it would be 2 squared the 1 fourth. Or 2, we'd multiply those. 2 times a fourth is a half. Oh, but hey, 2 to the 1 half is a square root, so it'd be 2 square root of 2. I'll accept that version, but this one is definitely better. Let's try a fraction. 4 through to 7 over 8. Same as the 4 through to 7 over the fourth root of eight. Try simplifying those. Seven is just uh, one times seven, so we can't do anything with that. Eight, though, is uh, two times four, and four is two times two. So eight's three twos. But I want groups of four. The index is four, and I only have three twos, so I'm going to multiply by the fourth root of two to give me another two. If I do it on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. So I can multiply these together. Seven times two is 14. And now on the bottom, I have one, two, three, four twos. So I can make that a group. It comes out of the radical, and there's nothing left in the radical. So there's no more radical in the denominator. I cannot divide the 14 by the 2 because the 14's in the radical. The 2 is not. So that is our simplified answer. Let's try another one. This time's all with letters. All right, so this would be the same as the fifth root of x to the fifth over the fifth root of y to the eighth. On the top, I think you can see that x to the fifth is five x's. Hey, look at that, it's a group of five. So it comes out of the radical, and there's nothing left in the radical. On the bottom, 
I have eight Y's. I want groups of five. So there's one group of five, so it can come out. But I still have three left over. But I need a group of five. I can't leave it like this because I'm not supposed to have a radical in the denominator. So I'll multiply by the fifth root of y times y. That gives me five y's. If I do it on the bottom, I have to do it on the top. Of course, y times y is y squared. And on the bottom, I now have my group of five y's. It can come out. So I have the y that was there times the other y that I just put there. Nothing left in the radical. So it looks like our answer is going to be that. I cannot cancel the y squareds because the ones on top are in the radical. The ones on bottom are not. And lastly, we need to do one of these. Uh, this is just division. A whole bunch of different things. Uh, divide like terms if you want. Uh, 18 divided by 6 is 3. And then we have the R's. Um, we're dividing, so subtract the exponents. Oops, just S's. And then the negative exponent on the t means reciprocal. Be like that. So for the r, 1 minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. All the exponents are different. All the bases are different. That's as simple as we can make it.